Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. I am Indrani, a student of data science course at IV Professional School. Today I would like to present my data analysis report on data science jobs and salary data set as a part of my research project under advanced excel module at IV. In the coming slides, I will be focusing on these topics. I have basically used MS Excel for this analytical study. I would show you the steps that I have followed and also take you through a dynamic dashboard which I have created based on the analysis outcomes. First, let's have a look at what data science is and what exactly data scientists do. Data science involves preparing a vast volume of multi-structural data for performing advanced analytics using modern tools and applications, including the process of data cleaning, mining, filtering, aggregation, manipulation to extract meaningful information from data. Data science domain mainly deals with three categories of data that is structured, semi-structured and unstructured. This high volume of data can come from multiple real-time data sources and in any format. Data scientists specifically examine which business problems need to be answered and why to find relevant data for necessary analysis. Data scientists use certain analytical applications to derive meaningful information and identify pattern in the data through visualizations. This in turn enable the business leaders to draw useful insights and develop effective strategies for business. Data science not only include data analysis but it also comprises multiple other fields and concepts like statistics, scientific methods, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning and many more. Coming to the dataset attributes, the dataset for the analysis has been collected from Kegel website, which is an open source platform. It combines data from one of the best company review sites, that is Glassdoor. It allows users to anonymously submit and view salary, as well as search and apply for jobs on its platform. The dataset being used for this project comprises details of various job postings related to data science roles from different locations and companies of EVC. The dataset contains one table with 37 numbers of fields and 742 unique records. Let me quickly show you the dataset so that you can have a clear idea about the rows and the columns. As you can see, the table consists details of each job title. The job title column showing the title of the job that is data scientist, junior data scientist, senior data scientist and so on. The salary column showing the range of the salary offered by the company. The job description column refers to what is expected out of a job title. The next column contains the name of the company. The location column showing the location of the job. The headquarter column showing the location of the company headquarter. The size column showing the range of the number of employees working in the company. The founded column refers to the company foundation yield. The type of ownership column showing whether the company is private, public or government owned. The next column showing the industry of the company and the next column we get the sector in which the company works. The revenue column showing the total revenue of the company per year. Next the lower salary has been extracted from the salary column and the upper salary has also been extracted from the salary column. The average salary showing the average of lower and upper salary per year. The salary is in US dollars and the unit is K that is 1000. The job location column showing the state which has been derived from the location column. Next the age of the company which has been derived from the founded year column. Next we have multiple skill columns like Python, Spark, AWS, Excel and so on. Where 1 means the effective skill is required by the company and 0 means it is not required. This details has been extracted from the job description. Next we have job category column which contains title of the job in both generalized form like data scientist, ML engineer and so on. 
Next column showing the seniority of job positions like junior, senior. It is extracted from the job title column. And here any means seniority level is not mentioned. Next we have degree column showing the company is offering experience credit for a master's degree or PhD degree for respective job title. Here also any means the degree is not mentioned in the job title. This is the overall clean data set which has been used for the analysis. Now moving back to the presentation slide. So my project objectives are to find which data science roles are high in demand and offering comparatively higher salary, to identify different variables affecting the salary offered and look for any correlation between them. Also, I wanted to understand from an employee's perspective which skills and expertise an employee should acquire to strive in the emerging data science field. Moving to the next slide, which shows the project roadmap. For any data analysis project from collection of raw data to generating insights, it is necessary to follow certain steps for the desired outcomes. The raw data set was in .csv format that is comma separated value format with 1000 number of records and 42 number of field. It was necessary to first convert the data in excel format and then clean and process the data by removing blank and duplicate rows and performing several simplification to make the data usable for further analysis. The final data set consists 37 number of field and 742 records. For solving the key problem statements based on the data set, I have used different excel functions and tools such as lookup and aggregate functions, pivot tables and charts, data validation, conditional formatting, sorting and filtering and so on. And finally I have created a dashboard to present the overall outcome. Now coming to the key questions which I have selected from three categories to generate insights that will support my project objective. Let me show you the analysis part in Excel which would help you to understand how I have answered each of these key questions. Prior to analysis, I have named the complete table and the column ranges for convenience. To name the table, you need to select any cell within the table and press Ctrl A and then in the name box you can type a name and press enter. Here you can see my table name is table 1. After that I have named each column range as per the respective field name. For that you need to select the whole table, go to formulas, select create name form selection and here we need to name the selected range from the top row that is here. Then press OK. Here, as I have already done that, I will skip this step. Also, for using the lookup function with these, I have named the complete header row as header. Now, coming to the first question, which asks identify the state or location wise distribution percentage of data science related rows. Here, I have used pivot tables to find the desired outcome. To create a pivot table, you need to go to the data set, select any cell within the table, then go to insert, select pivot table. Here the table range is automatically taking the name of table, that is table 1, which I have assigned. For the output table, you need to select the place for which you can either select a new worksheet or existing one. Here I have I have created separate sheets for questions. I would select existing worksheet and the location would be the sheet name that is question 1 along with the cell number and press OK. For this question, I would need two fields that is state or job location and the number of jobs. Here I would simply drag the job location under row and job title under values. As I need the output in percentage, I need to right click on the cell, count cell column and show values as percentage of grand total. Also, I can sort the details from largest to smallest. Here I have taken 
top 10 values using the value filters. So my pivot table is ready. After that, I have created a pivot chart from this table. For that, select the pivot table, go to pivot table analyze and select pivot chart and select any relevant pivot chart from the available options. I have used line chart for this problem. Here you can add data labels and remove the field button. So this would give the precise look of the chart. I have also used a slicer to control the chart. To create a slicer, select on the pivot table, go to insert and select slicer. Check the option on which you want to create the slicer. Here I will select job location as the slicer. So from the analysis and the chart output, it can be inferred that California has the most number of data science related jobs. California, New York and Virginia together has around 50% of the jobs. Coming to the next question, it is what is the maximum and minimum salary structure based on the job title. Here also I have created pivot table and column chart in the same manner and used job category as slicer. From the analysis, I have found data science director is the most paying job in the database, followed by email engineer, data scientist, data engineer, and data analyst. Even though email engineer was not in demand in most of the states, it still gets highly paid. Analyst role has the lowest average minimum annual salary among all job categories, and data analytics role has the lowest average maximum annual salary among all job categories. Similarly, I have done question 3 that is what is the average salary in different states for different job category. Here I have created a bar chart from the pivot table and found California has the highest average annual salary followed by Illinois. This could be because there are 74 numbers of job posting in California for data scientist role which are highly paid. Coming to next. What is the average salary according to different data science tools and skills for each job rules? Here I have used average if function to find the average salary according to different tools for each job rule. Also I have used conditional formatting to show the salary is varying under each skill for different job rules. Like for data engineer, data scientist, ML engineer and other scientists where Python skill is mentioned, it is getting comparatively higher salary. Overall, it can be observed that the positions where Python and AWS skill are mentioned in the job description are getting paid more. Comparatively less salary has been offered for the job posting in which Excel skill is mentioned. For other skill, there is not much relation in the, between the skill and the average annual salary. Coming to the next question, here I wanted to understand what are the top skills required by the company for each job title or what are the common skills a data scientist should have. I have used sum if function to find the number of times each skill is mentioned for different positions. Also I have used data validation for different job roles and use conditional formatting for showing variation of skill within each job role. To apply conditional formatting, you first need to select the range, then go to home, then select conditional formatting and select data box. As I have already done that, I will skip the step. Data validation is basically used to apply some restrictions on the type of data that can be entered within a cell. For this, you need to select the cell on which you want to apply the rule, then go to data, then select data validation. Here 
I would select list as I want to input a specific list within the range. You must create the list separately somewhere within the sheet. In the source, you need to select that list range and press OK. Now, if I select the drop down, you can see the list is coming and I can choose any option from this. Here, I have shown all the job positions for the complete view, but I can simply keep one column and see the result by using the drop down and the result will change accordingly. From the analysis, it can be inferred that Python and SQL are the top skill in demand for data scientists, data engineer, machine learning engineers. Excel is also a good skill to have for many of the job listed. Spark, Keras, SkyKit, these are the skills which are not mentioned in many of the job description. For the next question, that is, find the relation between the job title or category, average salary and degree. I have used pivot table and a column chart and found companies that mention a PhD degree in their job description offered much higher average annual salary for each job role as compared to master's degree. Next, I wanted to determine what the top 5 industries with maximum number of data science related job postings. Using pivot table and a pie chart, I have found biotech and pharmaceutical industry has maximum number of jobs followed by computer hardware and software industry and insurance carriers. However, IT industry has fewer jobs for data science related roles. Next question is about job title with distribution of jobs in percentage. From the pivot table and chart output, you can see that there are large number of job postings for data scientists followed by other scientists and data engineers. Data scientist, data engineer accounts for around 70% of the job posting. Coming to the next, here the question is how are the job positions are getting paid? With respect to different seniority level. So I have created a column chart to compare average salary with seniority level and found senior ML engineer is getting the highest salary with no, while normal ML engineers are getting paid 20% less. It is followed by senior data scientists who are earning 28% more than a junior data scientist. Next question is about average salary range provided by public or private companies in finance, real estate and retail sector. Here I have used lookup, index and match function along with sort and filter. First I have copied the company name column from the main data set. I have kept only unique company name. To get the relevant ownership details according to company name. I have used index and match function. The index function is used when lookup value is located anywhere but not in the first column of the table array. Under index, the table array would be the table 1. Next, to find the row number, I have used match function. Under match function, the lookup value will be the company name and the lookup array is the column range which has been named as per the header and match type here would be 0 and I need exact match. Next I need column number. For this again I have used match function. Under match the lookup value would be this column and lookup array is the range where I need to look for the value. I have named the header row as a header and here the lookup array is header. And for exact match, the match type would be 0. Following this, I have found the ownership details for all the companies. By applying proper sale referencing rule, I have dragged and copied the formula to the sector column to get the respective sector. Using the XLOOKUP function, I got the salary and average salary details as well. Then I have used the filter on the whole table. The shortcut to apply filter is Ctrl Shift plus A. 
Once the filter is active, then you can select the filter icon in each column and check the required option only. One keynote here is to perform any calculation using the regular Excel functions on the derived table, you need to copy it somewhere else or you can directly use the subtotal function on the filtered table. To find the average salary range of three sectors, here I have used subtotal function along with maximum and mean function and found that in finance sector, average salary is ranging from 27.5k US dollar to 173k US dollar. In real estate sector, average salary ranging from 95k US dollar to 130k US dollar. And in retail sector, average salary is ranging from 85k US dollar to 163.5k US dollar. Coming to the last question, where I have tried to look for any correlation between revenue, age, size of the company with the salary offered for different roles. Using the pivot table and chart, I have found that there is no significant effect of company age and revenue on the salary offered for different roles. However, larger sized company can afford to pay the best for different roles. So I have explained each key question along with their outcome separately. However, for a high level summary of the analysis, a comprehensive data visualization was necessary. Dashboard analysis helped me to present the prominent outcomes in a precise manner. I will now show you the snapshot of my dashboard. This is my dynamic dashboard display. Here you can get an idea on different patterns for the key outcomes. I have used two slicers here. One is for job location, another is for job role or category. It is important to create connection between the slicer and the relevant pivot tables and charts. For that, you need to right click on the slicer select report connection and check the pivot tables on which you want to apply a particular size. As I have already done that, you can see if I select or deselect any option on this slicer, the dashboard will change accordingly. That's why it is called a dynamic or interactive dashboard. It combines all the outcomes into a single interface for a quick and detailed overview. Now, as we have taken a look at the dashboard, let me quickly get back to the PPT. So, I would like to conclude my presentation with some major insight from the overall analysis. I have found data scientists and data engineers are the most demanding and promising role in the emerging data science job market. ML engineer, data scientist and data engineer roles are getting higher as salary package with average minimum annual salary of 75k US dollar per annum. Seniority level, analytical skills and tool expertise and education background could be somewhat directly related to salary distribution. Most of the companies have asked for master's degree in their job description. According to company expectation, Python, SQL, and Excel are the must have skills for any data science related roles. And that brings us to the end of this presentation. I am extremely grateful to IB Professional School for giving me an opportunity to present this to you. Hope this video was insightful for the data science experience as well. I would really appreciate any feedback or suggestions on the analysis as well as my presentation. Thanks to all the viewers. Keep learning. Goodbye.